Gallimimus is a genus of theropod dinosaur that lived in what is now Mongolia during the late Cretaceous period, about 70 million years ago. Several fossils in various stages of growth were discovered by Polish Mongolian expeditions in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia during the 1960s. A large skeleton discovered in this region was made the holotype specimen of the new genus and species Gallimimus bulatus in 1972. The generic name means chicken mimic, referring to the similarities between its neck vertebrae and those of the galliforms. The specific name is derived from bulla, a gold capsule worn by Roman youth, in reference to a bulbous structure at the base of the skull of Gallimimus. At the time it was named, the fossils of Gallimimus represented the most complete and best preserved ornithomimid material yet discovered, and the genus remains one of the best known members of the group. Gallimimus is the largest known member of the family Ornithomimidae. The adult holotype was about 6 meters long and 1.9 meters tall at the hip, its skull was 33 centimeters long and the femur was 66 centimeters. It would have weighed about 440 kilograms. In comparison, one juvenile specimen was about 2.15 meters long, 0.79 meters tall at the hip, and weighed about 26 kilograms. Based on fossils of the related Ornithomimus, it is known that Ornithomimosaurs ostrich dinosaurs were feathered, and that the adults bore wing-like structures as evidenced by the presence of quill knobs on the ulna bone of the lower arm, bumps that indicate where feathers would have attached. The snout was long compared to other ornithomimids, although it was broader and more rounded at the tip than in other species. Gallimimus was toothless with a keratinous beak, and had a delicate lower jaw. The neck was proportionally long in relation to the trunk. The hands were proportionally the shortest of any ornithomimosaur and each had three digits with curved claws. The forelimbs were weak while the hindlimbs were proportionally long. First Gallimimus fossils were found during the Polish-Mongolian expedition to Gobi Desert, between the years of 1963 and 1965. Among the Nemeorus dinosaurs collected, many of them were ornithomimids, including Gallimimus. Three partially complete skeletons, two with skulls, as well as many fragmentary remains, were collected. The largest skeleton, that later to become the holotype of Gallimimus bulatus, was discovered by paleontologist Sofia Keelan Jaw in Zyg in Kushu in 1964. It was preserved lying on its back and the skull was found under its pelvis. Another fossil was found in 1967, it was a small skeleton missing forelimbs. All of the fossils were found were found in the Nemegt Basin region of Mongolia. Fossil poaching has become a serious problem in Mongolia in the 21st century, and several Gallimimus specimens have been looted. In 2017, Hang Ye Li and colleagues reported a fossil trackway discovered in 2009 associated with a clenched Gallimimus foot. The rest of the skeleton appeared to have been removed previously by poachers, along with several other Gallimimus specimens. As an ornithomimid, Gallimimus would have been a fleet animal, using its speed to escape predators, its speed has been estimated at 42 to 56 km per hour. This would let it run away from predators, as for example Velociraptor's top speed is estimated to be about 40 km per hour, or Tyrannosaurus rex, that could reach speed of about 27 km per hour. However this does not make Gallimimus fastest dinosaur, as Carnotaurus could match its speed with estimates of about 48 to 56 km per hour, or the Oviraptor who could reach up to 69 km per hour top speed, which are possible to have lived at the same time as Gallimimus. Luckily for Gallimimus, it was able to run way longer with top speed than average predator, meaning they could outrun them via endurance. As to compare it to modern animals, Gallimimus was able to run as fast as average wolf, which could reach speed of about 55 km per hour, however he could not run as fast as ostrich, that can reach about 70 km per hour. It is due to the fact, that tail and hands of Gallimimus limit its speed. The head of Gallimimus was very small and light compared to the vertebral column. Due to the length of its snout, the skull was long compared to other ornithomimids, 
and the snout had a gently convex, sloping upper profile. The side profile of the snout differed from other ornithomimids in not narrowing towards its front half, and the lower front margin of the premaxilla at the front of the upper jaw rose upwards, instead of being horizontal. The delicate lower jaw, consisting of thin bones, was slender and shallow at the front, deepening towards the rear. The front of the mandible was shovel-like, resulting in a gap between the tips of the jaws when shut. The shovel-like shape was similar to that of the common seagull, and the lower beak may have had a shape similar to that of this bird. The jaws of Gallimimus were toothless, and the front part would have been covered in a keratinous horny beak in life. The front part of the neck of Gallimimus would have been very mobile with the hind part was more rigid, the neural arches in the vertebrae of that region being similar to chicken and other galliforms, indicating similar feeding habits. They found the beak of Gallimimus similar to that of a duck or goose, and that it would have fed on small, living prey which it swallowed whole. The mobility of the neck would have been useful in locating prey on the ground, since the eyes were positioned on the sides of the skull. They assumed that all ornithomimids had similar feeding habits, and pointed out that Russell had compared the beaks of ornithomimids with those of insectivorous birds. Paleontologists suggested that Gallimimus was capable of cranial kinesis, a feature which allows individual bones of the skull to move in relation to each other. They also proposed that it did not use its short-handed forelimbs for bringing food to the mouth, but for raking or digging in the ground to access food. However some paleontologists argue, that Gallimimus might have been a herbivore or omnivore, as stritches and emus are mainly grazers and browsers, and that the skulls of ornithomimids were most similar to those of the extinct moas, which were strong enough to bite off twigs, as evidenced by their gut content.